Hello, I have David Nason on with our Business Spotlight series today. Um, he owns Higher Brain uh, here in the area and excited to, to have you on the on the call today. My name is David Dowdy. I own Action Coach Lake Norman, which is a local business coaching education training firm here in Mooresville. And David, why don't you kick us off, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about Higher Brain. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Appreciate having me on, uh, David. So my name is David Nason, um, and I live in uh, Davidson, North Carolina, right outside of Charlotte. I actually split my time between here and the Boston area, Massachusetts. I have a little house up there, um, which is uh, fun and, and exciting. So I've been, uh, I've lived in the world of of, uh, of talent, um, talent performance uh, recruitment for twenty three years. Um, over 120,000 hires in 152 countries around the world. Um, and uh, Higher Brain is a company. So we are a hiring effectiveness platform. And uh, what we allow companies to do is to replace uh, lots of other technologies that don't actually um, solve hiring uh, problems. And we provide them with a suite of tools um, to allow them to do uh, just that. So uh, yeah, and again, thanks for having me on. That's awesome. So how long's the business been been around? Yeah, so our um so higher brain is interesting in that we are we talk about um it's interesting kind of software we have knowledge management or um expertise if you will built into the platform. So I typically describe that as that like Salesforce, for instance, everyone knows Salesforce, right? Salesforce does not produce great salespeople, right? Doesn't train you on how to hire or excuse me, on how to sell. Uh, right. But higher brain does both. So we train people uh, on best practices, um, very, very comprehensive program. And then we provide them a suite of tools to use um, through the entire hiring cycle, if you will, before, during, and even after the hiring cycle to ensure the highest probability of success. So higher brain um, as a training company has been alive for four years, um, but the higher brain, the software company is uh, just at our two year, uh, two year mark. Oh, good. Well, congratulations. Yeah. First Thank few you. years are always a, a bit of a challenge. Yeah, um, yeah. For for a lot of folks. So if you if you were to do it all over again, start start completely from scratch again, um, man, what would you what would you do differently? Knowing <laughs> what you know now. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, that's an interesting question, right? Because some of the things I'm glad that I learned, um, and those things were how to produce software. Um, I did not know I had an idea or I thought I do. I had two other successful businesses, uh, but software is its own, is its own animal, if you will. Um, and the first versions uh, were terrible. It was almost like a choose your own adventure uh, story, uh, David, where you could never get back to the beginning of the thing. <laughs> so yeah. I had to learn the fundamentals of software um, uh, production. I don't code, but I learned how to scope, build requirements. I learned how to wireframe, et cetera. I never thought I was going to have to learn how to do that, but that's been super helpful to me. But the thing that I would do differently, and I encourage others to do is uh, go to market early, go to market way earlier than you think. I thought I had a reputation, David. <laughs> and when you show somebody your new baby, you realize, oh, you don't have a reputation. I, the first, you know, when we finally went to market, uh, we should have gone to market. We could have gone to market a whole year uh, earlier uh, than that. And um, so um, I, that's what I encourage people to do. You got to get it in front of users. Um, you know, we've completely re-architected um, the platform <laughs> really from beginning to end um, because what I thought people would use it for and what I mm -hmm. thought would be helpful <laughs> to folks, but what actually was helpful were, were, uh, were different things. So that's my, that's my top advice. We should have gone to market a year earlier and, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, show your show it to people. Get people in it. Get people using it. The marketplace will tell you what it wants. It yes, needs. it will. Uh, oh, it will. It will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that may be one of the you know the next question I was going to ask was what some of your biggest learnings have been as as an owner. Yeah. Since yeah. Yeah. Thanks. They're they're really along those lines. I think that the um, originally uh, we were leading with training. And uh, we got a lot of resistance. Um, managers, you know, don't have time. They're not interested, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so we made a pivot um, out of probably frustration, if you will, um, where I was talking to a global leader. They wanted everything that we had, but 
not right time and, and things and said, I was, I just asked, I said, well, what's your biggest problem? You know, well, what do you need help with? And they described, they said, you know what we need? We need a global repository of job descriptions that are all in our approved format that are indexed to, uh, by any means you can possibly think of so that people can find something that they've used before. They can change it. They can iterate it. They can improve on it or whatever else. And they can't change the parts of the job description um, that we don't want them to change. And I said, you know what? Our architecture would support that. And so I scoped something out um, with that company, uh, not a small company, an a international 140,000 person, little, oh, little wow. tiny okay. company called Nokia. Um, and we had a, um, we did a pilot in North America, super successful. Um, about uh, maybe nine months later, uh, we went global and uh, we just signed um, uh, a, a big renewal um, with them today. So the simplest problem, job descriptions, and it's fascinating. Like, so for instance, now we have technology to scan companies, career sites, depending on the company, anywhere from 60 to 70% of job descriptions have spelling errors and grammatical errors in them. They have biased language in them. They have far too many requirements. They're not in the same template. They're missing statutory, um, language, legally required language. In, in they're, they're missing things like compensation in those in states uh, and in, in other countries that have uh, requirements that you have to have your compensation on your job descriptions. And there's no technology that, that supports that. It's phenomenal. I mean, they're big, cute workday friends, right? Multi-billion, super famous, blah, 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 whatever else. If I have workday and I want to find a job description that my counterpart, Mary, made a great hire for, yeah. I can't go in there and find it. I can't collaborate with Mary to improve my job description. I have to send it to her in a Word document or a Google document or something like that. And then what happens? People change the fonts and the bolding and the whatever, and they come up with their own taglines. We had a company, I won't mention them by name, 206 job descriptions on their, on their site, 193 different templates, 68% spelling errors, grammatical error. And I could go on and on, but here's why. People get promoted into management and leadership jobs. Is it because they're great writers? Is it because they're really good at articulating a set of complex business requirements into a job description? No, they're not. So we built it and it's, it's bulletproof and it's brilliant. And it's the funnest thing in the world. It's the smartest dumb idea that we ever had. And then we also have the knowledge and we continue to build new applications you know, for companies to solve those business problems. So stuff that is typically lost in this, in, in a, uh, in a hiring cycle. Um, we captured that those things digitally and we pr have all kinds of different AI assistants for people um, that help them to do, uh, to be successful um, and to do things that are hard and take a lot of time and are inefficient. Well, just listening to you talk, I can, it's clear how excited you are about what you've accomplished. And even with the simplest notion and, yeah. and the potential that's ahead for you it's, and for the company and the technology. Yeah. Thank you. But as you stepped into small business and still, still in it and at it, there's so many different misconceptions about small business. Now, do any, you know, what comes to mind when you, when you think about that and how you might've, you know, kind of address those as you've gone along, or maybe you haven't addressed all of them just yet. Yeah, yeah, sure. I think that, um, so there are in the world of technology, and, and actually, um, uh, these, uh, these accelerator organizations are, are larger than just technology today, but the biggest one's called Y Combinator, or the most well known, maybe, uh, there's some tech stars is another one. Um, uh, I'd tell you what I, I, I did not know, I didn't know um, things that were um, I didn't know things about, about how to form. Oh, excuse. So I'll, I'll step back for a second. I originally formed the company as an LLC. Um, and then we chose to, we wanted to, to grow this as a venture backed uh, company. So we needed to convert that into a corporation. There were lots of things we didn't do <laughs> that I wish we had done. Um, one thing in particular is trademarking your name and your IP to the degree of which it's protectable. So what happened to us, which is interesting, so we did get our trademarks in the United States, um, but we didn't do it internationally. Mm -hmm. And then we've gone, we went in international, I mean, very quickly, right? So we've been 
gosh, we're in, like I said, 152 countries around the world now, um, but we weren't protected outside of the United States. Now, it's not necessarily cheap to do that, but if you're going to have a, a company that you want to grow and scale internationally, it makes sense to protect yourself. <laughs> it, you know, there's so many people, I, I talked to one yesterday, they tend to, you know, have these ideas for small bit, and they know enough. Like, yeah. And and sometimes you really don't know enough. So um, having some some key individuals around you to, to help watch. That's your super helpful. Get yeah. a good attorney and a great accountant and a bookkeeper. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Excellent. So you just mentioned 152 countries, I think. So tremendous growth. I mean, going going globally. So what do you attribute the growth to? I think that there's people in the in certainly in the startup world, software world, there's this, there's this catchphrase. Sometimes it's meant to quite frankly, you know, be insulting. They, they say it's a, it's a, you've got a solution looking for a problem. Um, and I think that that's not a really great, it is certainly true. Some business ideas, uh, no one's going to buy it. <laughs> that's true. Right. Uh, but in other cases, it's, it is how you're presenting what it is that you're presenting, the usability of it and what people need, um, if you will. So I, I attribute it, uh, 100% to it's this kind of change, if you will, in strategy from mm -hmm. you have to learn how to be great. You have to do the training first, right? We've changed that philosophy. People can enter the platform from what and from whatever position that they're in. If I have, if I've got to produce a job description, I can get in there and I can get that done. If I need to produce job uh, advertising language, I can get there in there and I can get that done. If I need to, a variety of different things, right? So you can. I think that's something where. You know, when we pivoted and, and realized that our features were products in and of themselves that the companies would buy and use and enjoy, and then later share other features, if you will, that was the turning point. And uh, that happened for us about 15 months ago. And we are almost 5x um, revenue from last year. And wow. congratulations. Year, yeah, thank you. Um, and 2024. We will we'll four to five x what we did in uh, twenty three. Wow! Yeah, it's kind of exciting. Wow. So that adds a layer of complexity as well. I mean, yes. you are a, a human <laughs> being in relationships. You've got help and and you know your own personal well being. How do you balance? Surely there's demands on you from the company perspective and being global, twenty four seven opportunity. How yes. do you balance? the demands of, of your small business in, well, I say small business still, but you know, yeah, regardless of what size, how do you, how well, do you, balance yeah, I, I appreciate that. Um, so what I do, <laughs> I don't know if it's good for, for everybody necessarily, but when you're growing something that's scaling in some cases, hyperscaling, your, your life gets out of, out of balance. It just does, you know? So what I make sure that I do is number one is I take off time on a regular basis. I don't have time to take a day off, but I take a day off on a regular basis. Um, we shut down, um, uh, and every non-essential, um, uh, role from for a week every year to recharge. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, that for me, and then when I'm in, when I'm doing family stuff, the phone's off, right? Um, I'm committed. I'm doing, whether that's going to a movie on a Tuesday night, you know, with my wife, uh, whether that is going to visit, you know, one of my kids at college, um, or whether it's, we're on vacation. Um, I, that's my, I'm 100% focused. And so that's my philosophy. I'm a hundred percent focused. I'm either hundred percent focused on the business or hundred percent focused on my relationships. Right. Um, that's how I, you know, well, I don't know if that's a perfect thing. And then I just don't sleep, David. I, um, <laughs> <laughs> as you can tell, you know what I'm saying? You've aged like five years. <laughs> what are you, 26 years old? But yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> 25. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So surely with the growth that you've had, you've got, I mean, your platform is for helping hire and, and assess talent. And, and I, so what is, what do you look for personally in a, in a great employee that makes sense for higher brain? Yeah. What are you, what are you looking for? Yeah. Interesting. So 
it's it's kind of on you know it's an unfair advantage for us um yeah. because yeah. you know i've also you know provided this work at 150 companies of various different sizes from massive you know international companies to startups um and so it is a uh our what, what we do in a start one of the things that we train to is forget about like job descriptions right and build out a a, effectively a business plan for a job. We call it a position business plan, a 12 to 18 month plan of success. What does somebody need to accomplish over these periods of time for them to be successful and for the, whatever function they're in to reach those goals and milestones. And then we hire those things. So for us, in, in it, it, it's a, it's the role, right? What needs to be done. Um, and it is also the size of a company we are. We don't have a ton of resources, right? It's just, a, you know, there's seven of us. <laughs> so, you know, you're going to, you can go two days without talking to me sometimes while we're, we are a remote company. So people who are comfortable in being in working remote, right? Without um, having, you know, daily in-person, you know, contact and things like that, right? Are, are super important at this size of the company. When we are 50 people and we have a couple of offices and things like that, right? Some of those things, you know, might change. Um, so it's, it's really solving when I say, what do I look for? I'm looking for somebody who can solve the specific business problem, right. That we're hiring, hiring to do. Um, I'm also not afraid of different personalities and I have a very wide tolerance for different styles mm -hmm. and that can be sometimes painful <laughs> for others and for me. Um, but it's a really great way, you know, people who hire people that they think that they like and can work with well with well you might end up with a company of six eight ten fifty a hundred people who have a fairly similar dna but guess what your customers okay there are uh, can be you know hundreds of different types of folks backgrounds personalities etc and if you don't have anybody at your organization right that can relate well with them then you're going to have, you're going to find yourself uh, having challenges. Um, how are you supposed to, you know, operational roles, financial stuff like that's not my background, you know, right? Mm -hmm. So if I try to hire somebody with my personality to be the CFO, well, <laughs> no, I'm gonna end no. Well. <laughs> no, 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 he or she would be very fun, outgoing, tell stories and everything, but they probably wouldn't get the books right. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I tell you, this is this is fantastic. I'm excited to meet you. So as we as we near the close here, pieces of advice, nuggets of wisdom you'd like to share uh, for a emerging entrepreneur business owner. Yeah, yeah. that's that's interesting. Um, my internally, I say a lot, and externally sometimes. I'm not you know standing up uh, on on any soapboxes yet. You know, <laughs> to tell my story of wild or whatever. Right. And I think like a lot of people give and get advice that's really just not helpful. It's theoretical, you know, if you will. So I think that the the number one thing, without a doubt, is whatever your idea is um, that you uh, build some kind of a prototype or a minimal viable product. It could even be like super simple. You could do it in PowerPoint. You could do it with wireframing tools. If it's a software product, um, build it and get it in front of people and get feedback, um, as fast as you possibly can. Um, there's a fear. I had it too, that someone's going to hear what I have to say. They're going to steal my idea and they're going to go do it. Well, Reality, David, is, is there's probably, um, I don't know, somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe 50 companies that do a little bit of what we do. Mm -hmm. And some of them are even using like our words to describe their products, but they don't do what we do. Right. You know, they're missing that element. The thing that, that I know that uh, most people don't know. And so I think that's probably the, the number one thing. Right. If you're you're going out to do something, you have a goal driven, you know, something you're driven to go, you know, accomplish and, and make uh, come to life, you know, um, then build something. Don't be afraid to share it. Get something out there. Get it in front of people um, and get their get their feedback. And then ultimately, like whatever that dream or desire is, it will come through. It may not be exactly the thing you thought you were going to build right? It may be a little bit different. That may be included in it. Maybe not. Maybe you're going to ditch that entirely. That's okay. 
right? Um, that's probably my number one um, advice. Fantastic. Hopefully that's then, helpful. All right. So if this conversation and learning has sparked an interest by somebody, what's the best way to reach out to you or find Higher Brain? Yeah, thanks. So we are, you can find us online at higherbrain.com and it's H-I-R-E-B-R-A-I-N.com. Um, yeah, we'd love to love to see you there. You can find me on LinkedIn, David Nason. I am a, I am the David Nason on LinkedIn. <laughs> so dumb, but I did think that was really funny. The only when one. I, when I when I got that. <laughs> uh yeah, and thanks. Uh thanks so much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So David Nason. Higher Brain, thanks so much for being on the Business Spotlight today and for everything you're doing in the community and much, much beyond just our local community here around Lake Norman. Appreciate you. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you.